All right, what's going on guys? G-Dog Casey here, bringing you another Final Fantasy XIV tanking video. Today, as you see, we are doing the Tamterra Deepcroft hard mode. And this one is a little bit extra special because it's got a lot of cool story elements in it that um, sort of tie into things you might remember when uh, you were leveling up your character uh, much earlier on. So, you know, if you're worried about spoilers, there will be some spoilers in here, but I'm not going to be really focusing on the story parts of it anyway. So, you know, you don't really have to worry too much, but you might see some things that would be considered a bit of a spoiler. So, in this dungeon, we're going to be pulling as many enemies as we can, unless the healer has an issue with that. I don't think that he will. Oh, I did, uh... No, I didn't lose thread on that. I probably will eventually, but... One thing that I've been sort of learning, as you guys have been... Have you know, been hearing me talk about it in previous videos, is that I'm trying to get a little bit better at pulling bigger groups of enemies. I probably could have kept going here as well, but I don't know this healer too well, although this healer, Kite Nagamasa, is part of my free company. So, you know, that's something. But I just haven't got a chance to play with him very often. So, I imagine he's probably okay with big pulls, but I'm going to keep him relatively moderate for now. And everything is exactly the same. The only thing is with a bigger pull, your, you know, your rotation is extended a little bit. But at level 50 as a Paladin, you really don't have much going on in terms of rotation anyway. So that is that. Now, one of the mechanics we've seen before is these tethers. I believe these tethers make the uh, Void Usher or Volteriga Usher, whatever it is, um, invulnerable. So you need to kill the tethered enemies first. I lost the Bane might, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. It's already dead. Alright, let's try to smarten up a bit here. I did get hit by that. Everything is hitting us right now, though. And that'll do it for that. Move on to this dude. He's got a very similar aesthetic to the first time through, but it's a little darker, a little more red. But you're doing the same kind of things where you're uh, unlocking these, like, whatever they're called. I don't know, void orbs or something. <laughs> that was a waste there. And it looks like they unlock just by killing the mobs, so there you go. All right. Get a couple flashes off and move down here as well. We can fight these guys. We'll be fine. I'm just gonna use a few extra flashes because I accidentally used Circle of Scorn at an, at the wrong moment. I think I got everybody. No, nope. the Gargoyle Usher is actually not targeting me, so I will have him target me here. There we go. And when you make big pulls, just keep in mind it's a perfect time to use your convalescence and your defensive cooldowns just to help the healer out because the healer might not be equipped to handle you getting hit by like seven different things but if you use convalescence it will help things out immensely as well as the plethora of defensive cooldowns that you have that you don't necessarily use very often at least not at this level if you're pulling one pull at a time, there's probably almost no instance where you actually would need a defensive cooldown, at least as far as I can remember. There might be some, but I don't know. We'll use uh, those cooldowns though, Fight or Flight and Rampart. And there we go. Oh, what's this? I did not see these guys. over here. There we go. And dealt with. So, some good news here. I have recently purchased a new mouse. It is a wireless mouse, which actually makes me a little bit worried. Um, but I have my side buttons available. 
So that's really good. It's clearing out my hotbar a bit. I can put these abilities over here. But again, most of these abilities I don't even need to use <laughs> until we get to level 60 anyway. So I suppose it doesn't matter too much. All right, so this boss is relatively simple, I believe. It's been a while since I've actually been here. Um, we got all these, uh, oh yeah, no AoEs, right. We don't want to kill the adds because we can just keep them alive and let this boss's AoEs kill them. At least I think that's the plan. I don't know, they all just died anyway. Never mind, I think I might have just completely misunderstood this fight. It's one of those ones that it has like a specific mechanic, but I don't think it really matters, at least at my level, because I am overgeared for it, and it seems like everyone else is as well. So they're not really forcing us to do anything too tough, it's literally just tank and spank. These adds, I think they're supposed to spawn like endlessly, and they target one specific player. Yeah, see, they're all targeting Kite. Uh, he's gonna die here. He did die. Not sure if we were supposed to maybe kill the boss quicker. That could have been the case. I can res though. Yeah, you're not supposed to kill adds. I don't know. She it makes her do something like a like a strong attack or something, and that's why the healer died. That's okay. He's fine. We'll live. I guess we just burn it down in the future if you want. You can just burn the boss down. Just boss focus. I don't think I... I think I might have killed like one ad, maybe two. I don't know. I don't remember. So to open these doors, we need to come in here and and open up this coffin, which just triggers a fight. Whoever opens the coffin does get stunned, I remember that. So that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna see if someone else will do it. Uh, whatever. It'll stun me, which means that it will force the fight on the DPS or the healer. It's only two seconds, not even a big deal. And wow, that's a creepy looking enemy. But, not gonna be too tough. As you guys can probably tell, these hard mode dungeons are really actually not all that hard. They're just an excuse to give you a bunch of level 50 dungeons to do, and really hammer home your level 50 rotation. So, it's really good practice. If you're doing what I'm doing and just going through all of them, by the time you come out on the last one, you'll probably be very familiar with your rotation and not have any issues, uh, you know... Uh, come on, guys. I don't know how I missed all of that. Alright, let's bring him over here. I think we can fight a few more. There's only three in here. Yeah, we'll fight these guys too. We are going to use convalescence and... Yeah, I'm pulling big. <laughs> there we go. Alright. I do find when I pull, when I do big pulls and there's a lot of AOE and stuff, I tend to move around a shit ton, which probably really annoys uh, DPS, like monks and even dragons and stuff, because getting their positionals right is probably a major hassle. But I don't want to get hit by every single AOE as well, because that'll just make life really hard on the healer. Plus, some of these AOEs are actually pretty bad. Target the one with the most health. Here we go. And we're good. We gotta come in here and get this coffin. And this coffer. There we go. If the healer does it, it's probably a better idea. 
Oh, we actually have like more enemy. Okay, stuck. So we will use our cooldowns for this. I think I got everyone on me. Messed up my combo there, as usual. It's something I do fairly often. I'll even throw out a bloodbath as well, just to give me a little bit of extra healing. Right, a nice AoE from the Dragoon there. Yeah, that's how you do it. And they're dead. So that will open up our way to the next area. Uh, at least I thought it would. Oh, we'll follow Kite. I think we might have missed a room. Missed a coffin. to get a hit off on all three of them. Pull them in. And keep in mind, it's not only important for you to position the enemies um, so that your oh, so that your DPS can get like back attacks easier, but it's also important to make sure that the enemies are not hitting you in the back either. Because when they're hitting you in the back, you sacrificed your... I might get this wrong, and I apologize if I do, but... You sacrifice your ability to dodge and parry, I believe. So everyone's got like a dodge and parry stat. Or at least a parry stat. I don't know about a dodge one. Uh, I might be wrong about the dodges. Essentially though, if you're getting hit in the back, you have the potential to take more damage. Because one of your defensive abilities isn't working properly. Maybe two of them. So if you can make it so that all the enemies are hitting you in the front, then you, know, you have that ability to... Mitigate some of the incoming damage, which helps your healer, which helps you, which helps your team. So this fight, all I really remember about it is that we're supposed to protect this guy. We're not fighting this guy. Instead, we're protecting him. And we will just sort of take it as it goes here. Keep an eye on the entire boss arena and make sure that we react when we're needed to. Okay, so those balls will do damage if you hit them. Or, I don't know, the healer just hit them. Yeah, I think it's taking a little bit of damage. So he's the healer's just soaking up all of them, and we want to move out of this bleed area. Pull him over here. It's probably an okay idea for the, uh, the healer to be soaking them up, because... He knows what he's capable of in terms of healing, so he can just soak up as much as possible. I think that's going to drop another void zone, so we'll move him over here. Usually I don't see healers doing that kind of thing, but it's, it's very helpful because it means we can keep the DPS on, and I don't have to soak him up. Those do more damage. They're basically the same thing, they just do more damage. So there you go. You can see that our DPS took like a tiny bit of damage. <laughs> Not a huge deal, to be honest. Uh, we're in the void zone here, so we'll move him over here. Throw our shield at him for a bit. Take him down. Easy peasy. Enter the flow and move on to the next area. A lot of loot here that I haven't really been picking up. I probably should greed on them so I can turn them in for seals. But this video isn't about making your Final Fantasy XIV life more efficient. It's about making the dungeons more efficient. Get a flash off. Move on over here. Throw a shield. Get another flash off. I think we can just keep going too. Why not? This healer is really good, so we'll take advantage. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if we should do that. We can. We can try for it. I got slowed. So let's go for it. Screw it. Let's go for a huge ass pull. Alright, here we go. So we got them all. Perfect time for a Circle of Scorn and a Convalescence and basically everything else. 
If she gets real bad, I can just use hollowed ground like I just did. Oh, I'm so slow. This really does not help for getting out of AoEs. And I'm gonna throw in extra flashes from time to time. Because I need to... There we go, now I can move. Um, I need to make sure that everything's hitting me. I got slowed again. But you can see here, everything is totally fine. It's a little hectic, but as a tank, all I'm doing is just tabbing through different targets, hitting them like once or twice, and then tabbing to a different target. Um, we cannot select the uh, Pisco Demon, or however you say that, because we need to kill his tethers, and we have killed his tethers. So now we can focus him. We'll get rid of that dude, and now focus on this guy. It sucked a little bit that I had to use hollow ground. And maybe I didn't even have to use it, but I did just to play it safe because it looked like I was getting kind of low. But that's what it's for. You know, if you want to push the limits of your class... Oh, we got more... More ads, huh? Got them on me now. If you want to push the limits, then you might as well make use of hollow ground. It's a very good ability. Uh, these ads just keep on coming. I wonder if it's because of this Pisco Demon or if it's because of something else. Honestly, not 100% sure. Yeah, I was trying to avoid that. We use Mercy Stroke to kill him quicker, and there we go. So now we should be okay with just dealing with these dudes. Drop another Circle of Scorn that I could have dropped a while ago, probably. in the final boss. This is where the spoilers come in, by the way, so cover your eyes if you don't want to see it. You might recognize her already. <clears throat> she was the white mage who comes up to you when you're, like, level 15 or something, and she's like, oh, you know, my fiancé or my husband or whatever... You know, we, we were an adventuring party, and we looked up to you. We wanted to be an adventurer just like you. But he died. And I guess I didn't know the raise spell. So, she spent this entire time from that moment, which was like hundreds of hours ago by now, um, learning how to resurrect her husband. And this is what she came up with. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're fighting her dead husband now. Ready to roll. As far as the fight goes, I also don't remember all that much about it, but we'll pay attention here. Got some AOEs to dodge. These gargoyles cannot be targeted, so you just have to dodge. Stay on your toes, keep your eyes open, and I can't. those groomed to bees need to die before they make it to the center of the room. At least I think so. Most of the group is not targeting them. I think it's my job to just focus the boss, and the DPS is supposed to focus the groomed to bees, I believe. Already several of them are getting there. And I am losing health, so I'll use Convalescence. Uh, I am still losing lots of health. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so we're going to take a lot of damage because a lot of them made it to the center. So I don't know if this is one of those mechanics that you should be able to skip if you just do a lot of damage, kind of like Sasha. It might be the case, but it doesn't really seem to be. Also, it looks like you can just heal through it anyway, so maybe that's why nobody's really caring about the Grim to Bees. Not sure. I don't do this one very often, so I don't know if, uh, you know, you're, you can just ignore that mechanic or not. Looks like for the most part, though, people are choosing that route. Our healer... So, because our healer has done such a good job and has, like, level 60 almost every class, I imagine that... 
he knows what he's doing. So, because he is targeting the groom to bees, I imagine that's something that should probably be done. Yeah, there we go. DPS adds. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. That way, he can focus on healing me. I'm going to take a heavy hit here, so I'm going to use some more cooldowns. I have no cooldowns left, but I don't think I'll need them. That is something that, I, I don't want to say gets on my nerves, because it's not a big deal, but when the DPS forgets their limit break, or they use it right at the end like that, where it does basically nothing, it's just like, come on, you know? It's like, your DPS, you don't really have to think about all that much, although, you know what, maybe not. I actually take that back, because as I'm going through DPS, I'm realizing that it is actually pretty, you know, there's a lot to think about, but doing the limit break is part of your job. So, you should remember to do it, that's all. But, if you don't, it's not a huge deal. But if you use it when the boss has like 1% health left, it's just like, why even bother, you know? Anyway, let's say GG to the team. Let this cutscene play off. And there she goes. Uh, the dragoon impressed me. <clears throat> and there you have it. So that's Tamterra Deepcroft Hard Mode. Um, nothing too tough. You know, the bosses have some interesting mechanics. So uh, as we go through the Hard Mode dungeons, more and more you're noticing that the bosses start to have, you know, different mechanics that um, require you to do something else other than just tank and spank. So as long as you kind of have your eyes open and see what's going on in the field, you'll be fine. And if not, if you need a bit of a guide, that's what this video is for. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. The videos have been doing pretty well lately. Um, so I really appreciate that. And uh, I hope you guys continue watching because there's still a lot more dungeons to go. Next time around, next week, we're going to be doing the Stone Vigil hard mode. And then we're getting to some really cool stuff like Snow Cloak, Keeper of the Lake. These, these dungeons are going to be pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed once again, and we'll see you next time.